Uh, as it happens, when you see this up in the exhibition, this is actually from the exhibition upstairs. Um, I'll see if I can, here's, here's Vesuvius, and Pompeii is right down in the corner. Herculaneum is down here, out in this direction. So it's these green colors that relate to the AD 79 eruption. And you can see there, there's a lot of green actually, not very clear on this particular image. But do have a look at that. Um, here's a sketch of lava flows and deposits relating to the eruptions of 1872 to 1906. Um, so you, you won't be able to see it, but these flows relate to 1872 and uh, this one to 1906 and so on. So there are maps up in the exhibition that plot the distribution of lavas and ash fall, pyroclastic uh, flows, etc. Uh, for successive eruptions. I must say that the eruption history uh, in the last 17,000 years uh, of Mount Vesuvius really, uh, the way, the direction in which things go is largely dictated by the shape of, of Mount Soma. And uh, here's the rim around here. So. Uh, it would be true to say that most materials have gone out in this direction to the west or to the south. So this flanking rim has actually protected uh, this area to some extent. I just want to dwell briefly before we get on thinking about the history a bit more. At the time, uh, the Romans, or dare I say the Pompeians, uh, had a whole lot of gods. So Christianity had not reached this part of the world. Um, and the general mantra was that uh, the world was in a kind of state of chaos and governed by the key elements, fire, water, land, air. Uh, and you'll be fascinated, I'm sure most of you have been through the exhibition, I hope so, uh, but you'll be fascinated to just appreciate what a different culture it was at the time because at that time the understanding of the human condition was much poorer, much poorer than our understanding. And I put it to you that um, the people in Pompeii on the basis of what we can see in the exhibition worshipped men. I think that's a great thing. It would be nice if it happened again. but. The reality is uh, that this man came along, and I have to mention him, he's a famous geologist. And I think it's great that a geologist should be the person who discovered that humans have eggs. Nikolaus Steno, <laughs> he discovered that humans have eggs only because he had the benefit of the scalpel, and this guy sorted that out. So, the people in Pompeii actually seriously believed that the male provided everything, so they worshipped men in that sense. <clears throat> they also worshipped women for other reasons. This is one of the earliest images relating to Mount Vesuvius. There's been a, a great deal of discussion in the scientific literature about the shape of Vesuvius through time, and this is now uh, recognized as being part of that edge, that lip, of Mount Soma. And at the time, there was no Vesuvius, there was no cone. So it was just a huge, relatively open caldera. So I, I want you to imagine now uh, Vesuvius uh, as I've shown it without the cone. And that's more or less what uh, people in AD 79 would have seen. The cone has built since then. Very briefly, the eruption history. I won't read this out, you won't, you won't see it, but again, archaeologists and geologists have classified uh, the eruption history of Mount Vesuvius. In a nutshell, there have been eight major eruptions in the last 17,000 years. So on average, there is a major Plinian eruption. They're called Plinian because Pliny observed uh, the shape of this eruption and recorded it beautifully and described it as rather like a, uh, a tree, um, a conifer, a Mediterranean pine tree, if you like. 
And for us geologists, when we talk about different types of eruption, we really are talking about two things. We're talking about how high the eruption column gets and how explosive it is, how eruptive, if you like. And so we have different categories. Uh, and I won't bore you with them all, but just to say, suffice to say that there are Plinian eruptions and in the context of Vesuvius, interplinian, so smaller eruptions that are uh, between the Plinian eruptions. And a Plinian eruption reaches heights in excess of 25 kilometers and less than uh, 55 kilometers. It's something of that order. Here's a lovely image now relating to the 1772 eruption. Um, there have been many, many eruptions of Vesuvius, I should point out. I didn't itemize them. Uh, the last one was in 1944. So this is 1872. And note that the height of Soma, uh, that resilient spike, that ridge here, 1,150 meters. Uh, and Vesuvius, 1,281 meters. That's, that's the modern height. Another image. Uh, this one's a beautiful Italian grave engraving. Again, this is from this book I've got by Harun Taziev. And I think that's a lovely image. And this is a couple of shots relating to the 1944 eruption. So this is Naples, and uh, you can see it's heading off down towards the south. Another shot. All right, now I just briefly want to comment on how we would compare the Vesuvius with New Zealand. Um, we have likened the eruption to Tarawera, and this is Mount Tarawera, lovely shot taken by GNS photographer of some years ago, Lloyd Homer. And this is Mount Tarawera, Lake Roto, sorry, Lake, Lake Tarawera, uh, Lake Rotorua, Rotorua over here. And there's an airstrip on top. And this eruption began on the 10th of June, 1886, and it propagated southwards. It started here and moved in this direction. And there's a fabulous fissure about 17 kilometers long relating to this eruption. It produced a very substantial uh, amount of ash and also pyroclastic flow deposits. Uh, and so for that reason, Tarawera is, is indeed somewhat similar to the Vesuvius eruption of AD 79. This is an artist's impression, a fine picture. Um, it was highly visible, even though it happened in the middle of the night. It only lasted about four hours, started at 1.30 in the morning on the 10th, and it was all over by 6 a.m. Uh, the result was at least 108 dead. And because of the sound and light effect, uh, half the New Zealand population would have heard this eruption. You could hear it in Christchurch, apparently, in Nelson, in the Bay of Islands. Astonishing. But that's all to do with the speed at which projectile material was being thrown into the air. 